In early February, Ukraine's defense forces shot down a Russian-guided aerial bomb over Zaporizhia, according to Yuri Ignat, head of the communications department of the Air Force Command of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. He noted that this was not the first instance of such a bomb being destroyed. However, the Air Force did not disclose the exact method used. Experts speculate that Ukrainian forces might have employed anti-aircraft artillery for this purpose. Using anti-aircraft artillery for this task is a pragmatic choice for targeted defense, given its effective range of up to 2.5 kilometers. And it's also about the minimum amount of time there is per target hit. But there are various solutions that can modernize and even automate these anti-aircraft systems and solve the issue of the dependence of accuracy on the skill of the operator from the publication of Defense Express Military Portal. Whether this is the primary approach Ukraine is using against Russian-guided bombs remains to be seen. However, the Ukrainian armed forces have confirmed another technological advancement. In the near future, Ukraine's defense forces will be able to combat enemy drones using Ukrainian-made laser weapons, Trizub, according to Vadim Sukarevsky, commander of unmanned systems forces. With this technology, Ukraine has become the fifth country in the world capable of using laser weaponry to destroy aerial targets. This has enormous potential to change the battlefield. This is my personal vision. I am involved with this project so that with the help of technological solutions, we can effectively shoot down Shahed's reconnaissance drones of the enemy and ensure the defense of strategic facilities and our population. The Savalka VM-8 is just one of over 600 new domestically produced weapon systems codified and approved for use by Ukraine's Ministry of Defense in 2024. Many of these are modifications of existing weapons, but a number represent entirely new developments, particularly in missile technology. The Palyanitsia missile has entered serial production. The missile drone Peklo has successfully completed its first combat missions. The new Ruta missile is undergoing successful tests. Meanwhile, the long-range Neptune will soon become a terrifying reality for Russian forces. Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine, at the Boris Payton National Prize Ceremony. During German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's visit to Ukraine in December 2024, Kiev showcased its latest UAV innovations, including the Shark reconnaissance drone paired with the Ram 2X strike drone. The latter is comparable to the American switchblade and is designed for targeting frontline enemy positions. This combination, dubbed the Killer Duo, represents a significant advancement in Ukraine's drone warfare capability. It's on fire. Eight. Yes, yes, yes. Before Russia's full-scale invasion, Ukraine had no domestic production of long-range drones. Now, almost daily reports emerge of explosions at strategic sites deep inside Russia. Ukrainian UAVs are reaching record-breaking distances and successfully hitting targets. The Lyutyi drone, for example, boasts a range of 1,500 kilometers. Other notable Ukrainian drone models include the Bober, Morok, and Dracaris. One key driver behind Ukraine's rapid development of long-range drones has been the prolonged wait for Western allies to permit strikes on Russian territory using NATO-supplied weapons. It's not only about the USATACMS missiles, but also UK and French SCALP air-launched cruise missiles. Since the summer of 2024, Ukraine has been able to launch these missiles from the US F-16 fighter jets, which have become a crucial component of the country's air defense. Massive air attack of the occupiers, December 13, 2024, in the sky almost 200 enemy drones, daggers, ballistics, and 94 air, sea, and land-based cruise missiles. It is cruise missiles that are the main target of the Ukrainian fighter jets. According to the results of objective control, we have 100% confirmation of the fact that for the first time in history, in an anti-aircraft battle, an American F-16 shoots down six cruise missiles, two of them with an air cannon. And it was a Ukrainian who did it, Yuri Enut, head of the communications department of the Air Force Command of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, on Facebook.
Ukraine's air capabilities are also receiving a significant boost with the addition of French Mirage 2000-5 fighter jets. These are fourth-generation multi-role single-engine jet fighters. Additionally, Kiev is awaiting deliveries of Swedish ASC-890 airborne early warning and control aircraft. Reported by Valeria Nekopilova, UATV News. Ukraine should expand cooperation in Europe and the Euro-Atlantic region. President Volodymyr Zelensky said at the 76th session of the Northern Council, unity preserves peace in Europe and Ukraine should be part of it. Our people, our nation deserve to join the EU and NATO. And I am grateful to your countries for supporting us on this path to geopolitical certainty. And please remember in what time Every decision made by a partner partner country of the one under attack is first and foremost a decision about timing. Time for how long the war will last, how long injustice will last, how long there will be no true lasting peace. Iceland, Denmark, Norway and Sweden are ready to invest in the development of the Ukrainian defense industry, the heads of government said during the Ukraine-Northern Europe summit. Back in June, Copenhagen and Kyiv agreed that Denmark would buy Ukrainian-made weapons and equipment. And on October 28, Sweden announced an investment of 20 million euros in the Ukrainian industry. Ukraine has launched underground production of weapons, Volodymyr Zelensky said in early September. We are starting to produce weapons underground so that Ukrainian soldiers can defend themselves even when deliveries from our partners are delayed. We have developed our own drones and missiles. We are gradually moving this war back to Russia so that Putin will finally feel the pressure. The pressure to seek only one sin. Peace. Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine. The first plant of the German concern Rain Metal is already operating in Ukraine. The second one is on its way, the director of the company said in an interview with the Ukrainian mass media. The company is on its way to building two more factories, a gunpowder plant and an ammunition manufacturing plant. In addition, the concerns management is fully satisfied with the protection of these enterprises in Ukraine, Rain Metal CEO said. We have many good plans. The first factory is already working. The Ukrainian defense industry is our partner. Now we have a product plant and a service plant. By the end of the year, we will already have the first ultra-modern Lynx infantry fighting vehicle in Ukraine. Now we are servicing infantry fighting vehicles as well as tanks. So it's a very productive joint venture. Armin Papager, CEO of Rheinmetall. In the future, Rain Metal plans to establish production of air defense systems in Ukraine so that the country can defend itself. The construction of another defense plant will be completed in 2025. The Baikar plant in Ukraine is also 80% ready, the CEO of the Turkish Arm Concern told Reuters in an interview. The facility is expected to produce the Bayraktar TB2 drone or its heavier version, the TB3, which can carry a larger load. Reported by Anastasia Tarnavska, Victoria Smirnova, UATV News.